Welcome to module 6, lecture number 1 and this module is devoted to the additional topics relating to the new developments. Now, we can see the developments in the electricity sector is tremendous from very beginning when the electricity was growing and now we have a very mature and very complex system where generation, transmission and distribution, all these sectors are grown to its saturation level and there are some slight developments in the various sectors that will be discussed in this module. To start with, as we know, that the whole this electricity business, our electricity industry can be divided into three broad categories, broad areas or you can say broad subgroups. Those are generation, transmission and distribution. So, we will see in this lecture 1 that the developments from the generation side, developments in the transmission side, developments in distribution side and also we will see the development as a whole in terms of operational structural changes that is taking place in emerging power system. So, to see this development in your generation side, let us go and let us see this transparencies that is the developments in generation side. Again the development in the generation means what are the various generations that we have right now, it is very important before going for the new developments. Presently, we are having the power generations coming from your thermal power stations, those are burning coals or even though those are burning sometimes your oil and gas also. So, we have you can say thermal power coal based power stations basically called thermal power stations, we have nuclear power stations we are having gas based generations, we are having diesel based generation and of course, we are also having hydro power generation using the hydro potential energy that we use in terms of generation of electricity. So, th these technologies are mature and there is very few developments in these sectors. For example, in the coal based thermal power st stations, the development is related to that we are going for higher and higher size of unit generations because now we are having better and better cooling systems. At the same time, we are having the better insulating materials so that we can go for the higher voltage generation as well. So, the presently in the generations in the all over the world, we are having the voltage generation of the generating station is 33 kV and they are generating power up to 1000 megawatt approximately unit. This is generated by one unit not by the one plant. One plant may have the several units. For example, if this is your plant where we are having several units, they are connected with the GT here. Here we are having another unit and it is connected by generating transformer and so on and so forth. So, this is your one plant and that may have the several smaller and smaller units. So, this we have the maximum generation level up to this 33 kV and also we are having this power generation this level. However, in India we have the maximum generation voltage level is 21 kV and the single unit that is a maximum power of a single unit is 500 megawatt that is installed in the Anpara, Rehan, Singroli and several other super, super thermal power stations. So, we have the development from this side that we have the higher and higher voltage earlier these voltage were very low now with the development of the various insulating materials and also based on the very fast and efficient cooling system, we were able to generate high power at the high voltage level. Now, although this is also almost saturated and we are now going for the other types of generating stations that is called non-conventional. Although these technologies are not old, for example, your wind fuel, there is no it is new. So, there are certain other type of power generation that is called non-conventional energy sources and those are not new, but their technologies are keep on improving. So, they will be a new source of generation in future. So, this is the as, as I said in the generation level, the technology that we are having here right now, it is your hydro power, it is your thermal, it is your gas based it is your nuclear base and also we are having the diesel based power generations diesel. Now, you can see there are no doubt the various development 
from the even the thermal side as I said the voltage level of alternators as the power level is also increased. If you see the development in the electrical uh, mechanical side I am just telling here the boilers which we were using it was very conventional boilers. Now the people are going for the advanced technologies in the boiler that is called fluidized based combustion techniques. In that what happens the emission level is reduced and we can have the more efficiency. Also we are going for the clean coal technology. Clean coal. What is this clean coal technology there that what we do we try to wash the coals at the coal minery so that we should not transport the ice contents and then we can have the pure coal so its color free value will be high and then we can have the high efficiency of the generation. So there are various developments small or small in each sector here in the hydro sectors, thermal sectors, gas sectors, nuclear sectors and the diesel sectors in the all the field electrical, mechanical and the civil areas that said future developments are there. But of course if you will see in the electrical side mostly it is saturated. So now we are going for the different technology here the voltage level we cannot go up to this level and the power generation is also limited to that because the cooling system. Another development here is the power farmer that is invented by ABB. The power farmer as I said is a power transformer plus generation. Means here if you are having a generator G and then you are having a GT here then we are feeding this power to at the grid level and the system is connected here. Now in this power farmer what happens the GT requirement is eliminated and we are putting this generation higher than means we are combining this transformer and this generation together it is called power farmer it is a trade name given by ABB. In this we are just generating the generators at higher level we will see in the next few slides. In the distributed generation the concept if you will see earlier we had the concepts of the local generation means the loads and the generators were very close if you see just when in the first module when I was discussing about the evolution of power system I said the power generation and the loads were very close together. Then there was some era and we went for the power generation at the remote places and we were connecting with the high voltage transmission line through the grid. It was realizable that if you are going for more and more power generation the pollution etc. should be very away and also the energy sources they are away from the load centers. So the power plants were built very near to the energy source of availability like hydro is very near to the where the hydro energy available. The thermal power stations were very close to where the coals were all available. Now again we are moving towards the again back period when there was a local generation and it was feeding the local supply. So the distributed generation concept comes in that way itself. Suppose you are having load in this area huge load then you can have this generators here in this load centers itself and then you can feed the supply. Now we can see right now what we are doing we are taking the powers from the different remote generations using the transmission network. The major advantage of having this distributed generation are that we can avoid the TND here means there is no transmission requirement which we are going to feed here means requirement is reduced because your loads are keep on increasing. So you have to keep on building the new transmission line. If you are building generators here then you can provide the reliable supply, you can reduce the TND losses, you can reduce the TND requirements. So there are so many advantages. Now the question why right now we are thinking we here distributed generation. So the distributed generations are the small amount of power generation near to the load centers. Now the technologies are development in this side. Now we are having very efficient distributed generations and those can be built very near to the load centers. For example, your combined cycle power plant here basically it is combined cycle power plants is very very efficient. It, the efficiency may be sometimes 50 to 60 percent. <coughs> However, we know the conventional power here it is not more than 28 to 30 percent even though in ideal case it is less uh, is it 28 to something uh, 30 35 percent but in the actual it is 24 percent in the reality. So now we are having double of the efficiency and also they are very easily they can be installed, they can be very quickly started, they can be very quickly shut down and also 
the area required by these power plants are very, very small. Now, you can imagine the area requirement for the hydropower generation is tremendous, huge. Area requirement for a big thermal power station is very huge. But with the advent of these various the combined power cycle plants, we can put these power plants very near to load centers. We can have some gas based power plants also very smaller in area, a smaller amount we can put near to the load centers and uh, it can provide so various advantages as I mentioned here. So, the distributed generations are the amount, a small amount of power generators and they are distributed in the network near to the load centers, they are called distributed power generation. Again, the distributed power generations can be of different type, it may be wind type, wind power generation, it may be fuel cells, it may be bio based, it may be solar, it may be tidal. So, the various type of non-conventional energy sources, those can be utilized, even though mini hydro, micro hydros plants can be also, small hydropower plants may also come in the distributed generation sectors. So, let us see few here development first let us see the power transformer, power farmer energy system. The power farmer energy system here as I said the conventional power generation here we have the generator, this is your alternator. Now, we are having some lightning arresters here, surge protections here, this is your circuit breaker, this is your circuit breaker and this is your generating transformer and then we are feeding to your main grid system here. Now, what it is planned that this transformer, if we can do something here, we can increase this. So, we can go for directly we are connecting here and we are the feeding power to this. Now, you can say what are the savings? Savings in terms of you can say we have saved this circuit breaker requirement, we have saved this one and simply we require this circuit breaker plus here. We have saved the generating transformer as well. So, there is a huge saving and therefore, we can even though reliability is also reduced we can have the lesser space because we require the transformer here the biggest space and auxiliary control etcetera for this transformer. Cost is reduced, space is reduced, reliability is issued. So, so many advantages to go for this one. Now, the question what is this? What is the difference between these two? Why we are earlier we were using GTs, now we have moved to this power farmer means transformer alternator along with the transformer means we can go for the higher voltage generation here earlier it was not possible. Again, the technology here is not old, means this technology is again based on the basic principle of magnetic field, we will come to that point later. Now, let us see the various benefits of power pharma. First, the higher performance in terms of availability, in terms of overload, means its performance if you are using the power for power farmer or you are using your generator and the generating transformer, then this power farmer is giving better performance compared to that in terms of availability, in terms of overload. Why it is so? The question here, you can say there is some problem here in the transformer, your generator will be out, you cannot generate, you cannot feed the power here. So, whatever the problem here as well as here will arise, it will be giving you reliability of the system. So, if now here only this is the problematic, we do not have the transformer. So, the reliability here we have improved by reducing one equipment. If you are keep on you adding several equipments in the system, the reliability of the system will keep on decreasing because it is related with the reliability, it is related with the probability of outage, related to the probability of the some problem in this transformer and other equipment. So, here it is more availability. Now, in terms of overload I was, I was telling, overload means here the overload of generators, overload of transformer how much you can overload a transformer, you cannot exceed this capacity. But here the overloading of alternator, if you have a better cooling, you can overload this alternator up to 5 to 6 per cell, there is no problem. However, no doubt there is the overload capacity of a, a generator is decided by the turbine which is rotating here, the rotating part. So, the overload capability of this turbine is normally very, very less, very less because if you are going for the over, more overload capability of the turbine, the cost of the same turbine will be very, very high. So, we it is better that if you have a overload capability here, you can overload this alternator without any loss of problem. So, it just I said here it will have the higher performance in terms of availability and in terms of overload. Another is your environmental improvement. Oh, what is the difference in the environmental? What we are going to do with this environment? Now, what happens here? You are going for the more space and more space means more clearance more ground where you have to, if you have the trees etcetera are there, you have to cut there. So, here means in terms of environment also, it will be less 
of course the last edge will be also less so less heating will be there so overall you can have this your environment is also improvement is there lower weight of course weight in terms of weight of transformer and the weight of alternator combined now here we are removing the transformer now weight of a power farmer is always lesser so we are getting lower weight of course if lower weight means it will be lower cost total capital cost we are talking so lower weight lower capital cost i am not talking about only civil works it is the capital cost of operators including our power farmer is cheaper compared to alternator plus transformer another is your less total space requirement as i said there is no transformer in the power farmer so the space requirement is minimized greatly and then we can have very compact power generations no doubt means we don't require the gt substation at all you can directly connect to the grid so this is a great improvement and so we require less space compared to the conventional generator and generating transformer combination lower cost of civil works of course if you are not requiring the transformer the whole cost of the transformer foundation etc that will be minimized and then the total civil cost will be also less less maintenance so whenever you are having minimum elements in a power system in any system then it will have the less maintenance so in this case what is happening again we are not having the gt here so the maintenance is only required for this one and earlier the maintenance here plus the maintenance here were required so the we can say the maintenance is also minimum in this case compared to your conventional generating system reduce losses now the loss earlier it was the loss related to here only the generator that is a power farmer earlier it was the loss in the generator loss were also in the transformer so the combined loss was more than the loss which we are having in the power farmer here lower investment cost of course the transformer cost is reduced the less cost is required so the capital cost the investment cost is reduced greatly another is low lower life cycle cost here lcc is life cycle cost means if you are going to see what is the total period where the cost is going so this cost is reduced so the lcc will be also reduced means life a uh, total life cost will be also reduced greatly now let us see the theory behind that why we have achieved earlier we were not achieving we know that the conventional system here we are having this is a slot now we are putting the bars here this this portion is your conductors conductors rectangular bars we are just putting in the stacks so these are basically the inserted and having the insulation in between now you can see here why it was done because it was easy to manufacture it is easy to insert the bar inside the slots of a this is a generator binding so this is one slot where we are putting the bars for the binding purpose so if you will see here the voltage gradient at this level at this point it is 3 kv per mm is there but at the, this corner it is more than 2 to 3 times so always we know that the field at the sharp edges is higher than the than the other uniform surface so this is you can say uniform surface these are the corners means sharp edges so more fields are there here and that's more field means we have to have very good cooling because there will be more eddy current loss and then there may be possibility of hot spot and also there is a possibility of the breakdown of this insulation so you can see the field here the variation of the field here it is very three times you can see at the sharp edge it is this much and now we are having this value of this you can say what is happening with this you can see if you are moving from here this then you are having uniform then you are having again sharp edges at this one so this is the field around this complete path now if you are having let's suppose a circular conductor here let's suppose you are having circular conductor here and then you can say the field you are having the uniform now earlier the design was basically focus on that we have to design our complete insulation system for this voltage gradient so we were trying to 
see what is the voltage gradient here and whole system is designed on this one. So, our average field was less and then we were able to generate lower voltage. At the lower voltage, if voltage increase, this will be again increased and then there will be insulation back down. But now, for this capacity again 6 times, if you are having circular, the field gradient is uniform throughout here. here. So, this we were knowing, we know it very well, the field around a circular path is uniform and is less than the sharp edges. So, this is the case where now people are just transforming from here to here. So, what they are doing? Instead of this rectangular bars, they are putting the cables of circular cross sections and then here you can see the small sections are here and then they are just inserting. So, that we can have here effective circular radius and then we can have the uniform field and then we can raise the voltage three times. Now, earlier it's nine, now we can go for here three times is raised. Means, if you are having 33 kV, now you can multiply by three to four times, now you are going in the 100 kV system. Now, if you are having 103, 132 kV system, there is no need, you can just increase again insulation, you can layer, you can increase and then you can directly feed to 132 kV system of generation, there is no need of transformer. So, in this technology, basically it is nothing new, but we are using the old technologies and we found this power for one is very, very good and very useful for your future development and that is already it is located at several locations outside the world and some commercial projects are also about to come in the future. Now, let us see the development in the generation side. The new transmission technologies that is a high voltage what people are going again in the transmission side also we keep on increasing the voltage level and now we have ended with this 1100 kilo volt system. If you are going for again further higher voltage system what will happen then there will be more radio interference, there will be more corona and there is more electromagnetic radiations. So, also we have to go for more right of way means more path is required also you will require more clearance, the ground clearance and so on and so forth. So, your tower should be very high and it is very, very difficult to erect and it with the possibility of the reliability is also less, means the reliability will be reduced the system. So, that is why I said here the high EM radiation and noise, high corona loss and more right of way clearance are required. If you are keep on increasing the voltage, in India as I already mentioned, and that we are having a transmission line up to 800 kV. Basically, this 800 kV is the insulation level, but the line will operate at 765 kilo volt system only. This line is presently operating at the 400 kV, but the future will add the transformer at this insulation level and will operate those lines at the 800 kV, so that we can transfer power very high at that time. Another development in the transmission side, now people are thinking how many lines, if you will see if you go near to any service station, you will find so many lines are coming and going out. At that point, if you measure, EMI radiation will be very, very high and at that EM radiation is sometimes very hazardous to public because it may create so many diseases. So, the gas insulated cables and the transmission lines are becoming popular. These lines are popular especially if you are having less space or there is no scope, there is you have having limited space for moving the transmission lines. If you are, it is very congested area or there is a, some C etcetera, it is not possible to go for the towers or design etcetera, then we can go for the gas insulated cables and the transmission system. Now, let us see the gas insulated transmission systems here. I will for the transmission of high power over long distance, the gas insulated transmission lines are a good technical solution as an alternative to overhead OS means overhead lines and in addition to the cable. No doubt we are having the cables, but these cables are again limited by the voltage level. Already we are using the 400 kV grade insulation cables and it is used in several countries, but again the lengths are limited and the, again it is very expensive at the same time very difficult to you can say maintain and other problems are occurring here. So, gas insulated transmission line may be alternative to your overhead lines where you have a limited space, where there is no possibility that we can go for several 
several lines. If the diameter of outer seal is more compared to the core, it is called gas insulated lines. Normally, the tunnels are used at used in gas insulated transmission system. Here, what we are talking, if the diameter of outer seal is more compared to the core. In a cable, now question is what is the difference between here the insulated transmission line and your cable. Cable we know that here we are using a core and then we are having insulation here. This is your, let us suppose one, one core cable we are having. Normally, this is your R, this is your capital R this ratio is not very high means this core here this insulation is less and we go for the solid insulation sometimes also we go for the cable uh, gas insulated so this is the cable when this outer is not more the, than the radius of core but in the gas insulated transmission line here this is very very wide and your core is very small i'll show the example of this gas insulated cable you can see this what is happening? This we are having the complete aluminum cell outside here. And we are having the different here you can say the pipes and they are basically forming the conductor three phase. Here you can also see, here also it's in, you can also see. So three phases are going, you can see a man is standing inside. So here inside we can fill the gas so that we can have the high insulation requirement. So the here this is not air between the gaps here because in the air if the overhead transmission line you are using the insulation between the two wires are air and airs the dielectric strength is very less compared to if you are using an insulating material insulating gas so here we fill the gas and then we can have the very close the transmission lines and then it is just like a pipeline where we can fit all these three and these are basically hanged with the insulators and then we can just go far just like it is a pipeline So, as I said, the diameter of outer seal is more compared to the core, then it is called gas insulated transmission line, otherwise it is said gas insulated cables. Gas insulated transmission lines are used since more than 25 years for linking the power plants to the transmission network. Basically, this is always it is used and it is already in use for the last 25 years where we were using the power plants to connect the main grid but the, it was the first was commissioned in 1975 in Germany about it was length was 700 meters. The first mix GITL means gas insulated transmission line in the world successfully completed its field trial with an endurance test in 99, 1999. In Japan we have the 275 kilo volt 3.3 kilometer double circuit the gas insulated transmission line which can transmit about 300 MBA power. You can see this is 3.3 kilometer gas insulated pipe is there where it is voltage rating is the 275 it is very high value. No doubt the cost of the gas insulated transmission line is very high it is com it is approximately 8 to 10 times those on the overhead power lines which was earlier 30 times. So, with the development of new and new technologies, the cost of these, the gas insulated transmission lines is reducing and then if it is sometimes it may be very at par, even though cost will be more, but you can imagine that there is no right of way requirement, there is no cutting of trees. There is again, it is very, very reliable compared to the overhead line which is always exposed to the environmental problems. So, there is some lightning strokes and other will occur here, all the problems will be solved. So, basis of reduction of costs was you can say the adaptation of installation of techniques are similar to those used in the line pipeline. Now, the pipelines earlier it was very difficult because earlier people were digging the pipelines, digging and then they were putting, putting in the pipelines. But now going inside they keep in digging and putting the pipelines parallelly and then it was very very efficient and the cost of laying is reduced tremendously. The same time the simplification and standardization of individual components are also tried to reduce the cost. Now use of the sulfur fluoride this SF6 the 20 percent and N2 gas mixer also reduce the cost. Now people are using nitrogen gas here 80 percent and the remaining this SF6 gas 20 percent has reduced the cost. Earlier only SF6 was used which was very expensive. 
the basic design enclosing the here you will see the basic design of gas insulated transmission line that enclosing the tube is made of aluminum alloy means tube we are the enclosures that is aluminum alloy and designed to be a pressure vessel as well as carrying the mechanical load of the conductor means your this which i am trying to sell here the outside it is aluminum alloy it should be a the load of this various cables supporting here disc insulator etc so it must be a that and also if you are putting the high pressure gas here that should also it should not burst we are using aluminum alloy because there will be some eddy current over this here outside enclosure so that will be also cooled properly and then we can anyway we can minimize that now here the enclosing tube is also used for carrying the inductive return currents which is same as rated current because the current which are going here we can use the enclosures as a inductive current return and that is the same as the rated current so we have to use the aluminum rather than normal cement or anything else the inner conductor is an aluminum tube also now inside instead of wire now we can go for the tube because if you are going for the tube you can increase the radius and thereby you can reduce the corona and also you can reduce the l you can also reduce the you can increase the capacitance and you can say surge impedance loading of the system can be increased tremendously so it is held in the space by the bushing space in 100 meter you can see with this one we can put the cores we can put the conductors even the 100 meter apart however in the overhead transmission line it's several meters it is not here is 100 meter basically it is the space the bushing means here 100 meter here the span this is your 100 meter between these two no doubt the spacing between the conductors we are using three conductors here they are very close due to the how much insulating material you are using and they can be kept in this enclosed vessel the sliding contact plugs and the sockets accommodate the thermal expansion of the conductor means we can have the some sliding contacts here their pipe is there so we can have some here sliding contacts here outside and it is here so this can be taking care of expansion and contraction during the heating and non heating of the conductor so the g i t l s means gas insulated transmission lines are installed in segments means here the pipe is this then we can have another pipe and we can using sockets here so it will be taking care of expansion etc i have shown this diagram now you can see the benefits of gas insulated transmission lines are that it is low resistive loss it is providing and loss is reduced by factor 4 low capacitive loss less reactive power charging of course so there is a less capacitive loss no external e electromagnetic field what happens this you are having here the three conductors let's suppose and this is circulated here so outside here this is a circular so it is a cancelled out because you can see the field outside it will be zero one current is going one current coming here using your simple law you will find the field outside is zero so no external e electromagnetic field how about in others it is not so now no correction of phase angle is necessary even for long distance here the no correction of phase angle means if there is no displacement here in the phase angle no cooling is needed here because gas itself is cooled and the losses are less so cooling is not required because here whatever the heat will be dissipated this gas will be in contact of aluminum and that will be coming out no danger of fire here there is no fire at all because here gas is very pressurized gas and it is a gas which is not inflammable it is not then there is no danger of fire here you can repair very quickly means per person can go inside and you can correct it now you can assume that if you are having the transmission line over transmission overhead transmission line here and there is some problem so you have to go at that transmission line and then you have to come on top and then you have to shut down you have to maintain and then you have to go back here it is very easily by looking by hand there is no need to go by riding on the tower aging is as i said no aging here it is not corroded because no atmospheric contents here are there it is a gas and it is a inert gas so here the corrosion etc aging is is very less and that's why the total here life cycle is minimized tremendously now in other way 
the development the transmission side is your that is a your flexible AC transmission system which already I have explained it, it is solving several problems of conventional AC power system where we had the various stability limits such as a transient stability limit, voltage stability limit, dynamic stability limit, steady state, frequency collapse, something on us and also the various problems like loop flow, voltage limits, thermal limits, higher source circuit etc. that can be minimized with the facts which already I have discussed in the previous to previous module. Again we are having this power flow control which I have discussed that is your HVDC light. In that HVDC light here again HVDC light is a new development that is a improved version of HVDC that is also may come in the future and that is a new development which I have already discussed in the previous module when I was discussing the HVDC transmission systems. Now let us go to see the distributed generations and the dispersed generation system. So now let us see the other development in the distributed generations and also dispersed generation. Here there is slightly difference normally people use the distributed generation very widely rather than dispersed generator. There is a minor difference between these distributed and dispersed generation basically these generations no doubt they are used near to the load centers and they are distributed in nature. So the DG that is the distributed generation include the application of small generations in the range of 15 to 10 megawatt scattered throughout the power system especially near to the load center. DG includes all use of small electric power generators whether located on utility systems at the site of utility customer or at an isolated site not connected to the grid power means you it can be near connected to the grid it can be not connected to the grid means it can be isolated and it can be should supply power to the various customer. So whether it is connected or not if it is a small power generators and distributed throughout then it is called distributed generation. By contrast the dispersed generators here the capacity is range from 10 to 250 kilowatt. And this capacity is very small and a subset of distributed generation here no doubt a distributed generation is wide range starting from 15 to 10 here it is 10 to this uh, 250 that is known as the distributed dispersed generators refers to the generation that is located at the customer facilities and off the utility system means it is near to the customer facility or off the utility system means it is away from the utility system. The DG includes the traditional diesel, combustion turbines, combined cycle turbines, low head hydro and other rotating machinery and the renewables like wind, solar and the low head hydro generations. The plant efficiency of most existing large central generator units in the range of 28 to 35 percent converting between the 28 of this energy in their fu fuel into the useful electric power. By contrast, the efficiencies of 40 to 55 percent are attributed to small fuel cells and to various high tech gas turbines and the combined cycle power unit suitable for DG application. Means here we are using the high efficiency generating power stations, conventional are here having very small amount efficiency it is almost double of that so that we can reduce the cost and we can supply power with minimum cost of generation or you can say cost of operation. Now DG wins not because it is efficiency, not only really efficiency but because it avoids the T and D cost and the transmission and distribution cost as well. The proximity is often more important than efficiency. Why use DG units if they are not most efficient or lowest cost? Now the question why use the DG units if they are not most efficient or the lowest cost? Means whether they, if they are not cheap or not efficient why we should use it? The reason is that they are closer to the customers. They only have to be more economical than the central station generators and it associates a TND system. A TND system represents a significant cost in the initial capital and the continuing OM. So even though it is let us suppose your cost of here DG plus is it is not efficient and more cost but you can see that, uh, but it is very near to your load center it is supplying power. 
now your load is here and then you have a generator here you have to add the cost of this transmission and distribution system as well so in that one it may be comparable and it is a cheap option by avoiding the tnd cost and those reliability problem the dg can provide the better service at the lower cost at least in some cases for example in the situations where an existing distribution system is near capacity so that it must be reinforced in order to serve new or additional electrical demand the capital cost per kilowatt of the tnd expansion alone can exceed the cost of the dg unit here i want to say that this here what happens let's suppose your distribution system here your you are let's suppose situated here and this line which is a feeder coming it is almost loaded to its full value now if you are going to increase the load here another connection here you have to go for another line then the cost of this line will be very very high not only this reinforcement maybe other transmission lines are also required to be added but if you are putting here a one generating station here there is no requirement of tnd transmission distribution network so thereby you are reducing this and even though this is expensive the total effective value of putting this one is the cheaper option compared to taking power from the grid and from other sources so the dgs are the proximity is often more important than efficiency even though it is less efficient it is preferable and that's why people are going for the distributed generation again this distribution generator is very very important in the emerging power system where the conventional operation means where the utilities were generating power transmitting and distributing with the customers now it is a different custom means there are the different type of generating companies are there they are competing to each other to sell power to the customers and that's why there is a huge competition in this business as well so if we can have a large number of suppliers large number of generating companies again we can have the more efficient free and fair electricity generation and the competition at that level so the various advantages of dg means distributed systems are the ownership and operation dg unit must be owned and operated at a remote sites for utility dg means that it must service additional equipment which is generally more complicated than the tnd equipment at the various sites increasing its service cost for a private dg owner this means taking responsibility for owning and operating one's own power system in other sense here in terms of fuel delivery the getting fuel for a fossil fuel dg unit to a site is not always an easy or inexpensive task delivery by truck to sites more than 50 miles from a distributed generation adds up 25% of the fuel cost also there is unproven technology these are the disadvantages of dg as i am talking means the fuel delivery means suppose your the fuel is near to the some coal mines and your load is here and you are going to generate power here so you have to transport this coal here and then you have to generate earlier we were putting generator here and then we are feeding the coal here and the, over the transmission line so sometimes it is very expensive to bring it here but due to again new development it may be the cheaper option here unproven technology many of the most modern and the apparently effective dg units utilize the technology which has not been in wide use for the significant length of time means that technology is not mature the technology of conventional power generations like thermal hydro nuclear and gas that technology is mature and that power stations are running for more than 20 25 years in some cases this is more than 60 70 years so in the conventional generation the technology is a proven mature but here in the dg technology some of the technologies are not proven and still some r and d activities are on to improve the efficiency to mature the technology and to provide the reliability in terms of its generating units now let us see the distribution side what are the various development this generation is in we can include the distribution side development or in terms of generation development but that is a mixture of those so we can see the demand side the management question it arises what is the demand side management what is the dsm programs and why it is needed dsm activities are those which involves actions on the demand or customer side of the electric meter 
means you can do something at the demand side or the customer side means both are same then it is known as the demand side management these activities include various activities that can be done on the customer side or demand side or load side the load management strategic energy conservation and the fuel substitution means we can manage the load i'll just come to that point later what is the load management so we can manage this load we can go for the energy conservation and the example you can say people are using cfl so one of the example means you can use the compact fluorescent lamp means 100 watt your bulb that can be replaced by a simple 18 or 13 watt cfl so there is a huge energy saving load side management so energy conservation and the fuel substitution means you can use electricity in terms of whatever you are using your gas and other thing so there is a fuel substitution is also possible to improve again always we are doing all this demand side management for the betterment for the customers these are the deliberate intervention by the electric utilities our government to influence the customers behavior of electricity use to achieve a desired change in the load shape means these are required so that we can change the load shape what is the load shape load that is varying on the system it is called load shape we can change the load shape for the various objective various requirements all the adopted dsm measures must be cost effective and the economic to the utility as well as to the customers so all the adopted dsm demand side measures must be cost effective means it should not be increase the cost a idea is that we can reduce the cost we can improve the efficiency reliability of the system so cost effective and economic both to the utility and the customers as well now what are the dsm options the dsm programs are designed to change the utility's load shape as i said and the load shape is the your peak clipping valley filling or peak shifting this peak clipping you can say the load on any particular utility let's suppose like this what he has to do he has to have the generations up to meet this maximum demand plus reach up margin and that may be that peak may be occurring for the few hours so you can see in whole day there may be few hours or you may be sometimes in whole month or whole year that requirement is there so what you have to do you have to put the generators for that meeting that capacity and that cost is very high and that generator is not utilized for full capacity for th throughout the year so that peak is very very difficult to meet that and it will increase the cost of generation but if anyhow we can just reduce this peak like this and now you can say this portion is quite for larger period and then you can say we can reduce the cost of total cost including capital cost etc that will be minimized so this is called peak clipping the idea here that we can reduce the total installed capacity of the generating units also we require the transmission network for that providing power so it is a t and d requirement is also reduced significantly so here by reducing the peak it is very very easy that we can total cost means total effective cost per unit throughout the year it is reduced significantly another is valley filling you can say these are the valley filling here the people are not using so what is that that we can give incentive because during certain period your generation is very less your generators are lightly loaded they are generating and you know if your generators are not loading to the full load its efficiency is less cost of generation is more so during that period if we can give some incentive we can give something to the customer okay please use this energy then we can just lift this and we can have like this one and it is called your valley filling means we are just increasing the demand during the less demand period another is your load shifting are sometimes called peak shifting what we are doing instead of cutting here we are doing something people are not generating we can ask the customer okay you can generate you can consume power during this period so what we are doing we are shifting the peak for example the people who are using it for washing purpose there is no need to use the washing machines during the peak hours they can use during the off peak hours and that can be done by let's suppose we are offering that the price of electricity during the here minimum generation uh, minimum demand period is cheap 
people automatically tried to use their appliances during that period to save the cost of electricity. So this is basically one way that we can go for the load shifting. Means the peak can be shifted. So again, the total installed capacity of your generation, also requirements of transmission and distribution will be reduced significantly. Now the flexible load shape here, this is your load shape. So we can have the flexibility in the load shape. Whenever this occurs, we can change. That is also one type of load shape change. Here the conservation is one option. Means this is your normal peak demand. If you are going for the energy conservation, you can reduce your curve to this value and then you can see there is a great advantage there is a great achievement and then we can you can see here the cost of total not it is a energy conservation is saving money to the customers but at the same time it is a saving money to the utility as well for example you can understand let's suppose this is you are having a generator this is a transmission line here you are having a load of 100 megawatt this generator is also having 100 megawatt capacity this load is keep on changing no doubt and this transmission capacity is also 100 megawatt and this it is a supplied no doubt now what is happening if you are doing some energy conservation here let's suppose your, your consumption is reduced to 80 megawatt now the 20 megawatt load can be given to other and other loads can be connected so whatever without changing this generation and transmission line that's 20 megawatt is saved so this utility is not going to install new one this utility is not going to build new transmission line and the same transmission line is working and it is feeding power to other customers as well. But if you are not doing the energy conservation, some 20 megawatt is increased, you have to go for one line, you have to add another generator. So this cost will be added and this will be due to this cost. Now the total production cost, total cost per unit, including the capital cost, etc., that will be increased and the cost of this customer as well as this customer will increase. So it the saving is in two type means it is a saving by itself you are consuming less and there is no addition of capital investment and that's why there is huge huge you can say saving another is load growth you can see your load is this now you can ask the people you can give some incentive that people can generate more so that you can utilize your power properly for example you are having a generator just installed here and one line is let's suppose here and your load is here 50 megawatts total loads of customers and you are having 200 megawatt unit here what is happening this generating unit is running at the 200 megawatt uh, 50 megawatt all the time if this is your fixed demand thereby the efficiency of this is less and also huge capital cost is put it here that is not applied properly so we can ask this here customers who can generate and then they can go for two, 200 megawatt so that we can have the more efficient power system. At the same time, the total cost of operation will be reduced and then it will be saving to the utility as well as the customer. So it is called load growth that we can do in a such a fashion that instead of having this peak, we can ask that we can have a flat voltage growth here and then we can operate our power system very efficiently. Now question is what are the demand side options? The demand side options are basically reduce energy use while still satisfying the same end use requirement. Here I am saying that we should not go for the load setting as we are doing right now in our country because we are having the limited generation, limited resources. So loads are more, generation is less than we are going for. Here you have to reduce the energy use while satisfying as I said, is still satisfying the end use requirement. Requirement should not be just, you should not be in dark. If the requirement is the same, means more efficient electric lamp to give same light output, but the consume less electricity or both. For example, just replacing 100 watt bulb by the 18 watt bulb, that is, uh, you are saving, this is 70, you are 82 watt power, but the light, the lux, the slight intensity is same. So that's it is said the end use requirement should not suffer and it should be same and then it is called is one of that reducing energy requirement. Another is your reducing peak load reduces the need for the expensive power generations at the peak load level and reduces the need for the more generation capacity we require more capacity at that time. Also it is reducing the energy results in the cost saving from the generation. 
So, if you are reducing the energy, then it will also reduce the cost saving at the same time. So, there are various options are available in the power system and that we can discuss here. So, in this lecture, although we are going to have one or two more lectures again, but in this lecture you can see just we saw the various development in the generation side. In the generation side, we saw the development is the power, power, power former that includes your generators and generating transformer together. Also, we saw the various development in terms of mechanical development means different type of turbines, also very efficient cooling system that we have increased the voltage level, also insulation level so that we can go for more power and at higher voltage in the generating side. Also like the boilers improvement and also several other devices that we are taking place. Same time you can see the various distributed generators, they are also the technology are keep on improving and we are expecting in the near future for the other type of renewable energy sources because the conventional energy sources they consume the fossil fuels and that we are having limited and that is keep on going to each other. So, then we can use those conventional non-conventional energy sources for the generation of power and again there is a lot of R and D works activities are going on. In terms of transmission development, we saw that there is HPDC light development, gas insulated transmission lines development. Also, people are keep on increasing the voltage level to transform more and more power over the transmission lines. Also, the another addition to the flexible AC transmission system that we can control it smoothly. We can utilize the transmission network to its full capacity by installing the various new technologies, uh, especially the flexible AC transmission system is one of that example by that we can utilize the whole network resources to its maximum, its full capacity rating and that is we are getting great advantage over that. In the distribution side, there is also there is a huge development, development in terms of basically demand side programs where we can see and already we said uh, that demand side pro programs are very, very useful for both utility as well as the customer's perspective and we will see in the next, next lecture that what are the various the DSM options, what are the categories for the DSM actions, etcetera. We will see some examples for this promotional development and various methods. Then we will go for this organizational changes, what are the new changes that is occurring are taking place in the emerging power system. Thank you.